G'day, it's Richard McLean, date of birth, 8th of April, 1973. I'm in a terrible situation where I can't report crime to police, I can't be a whistleblower, I can't go to police and I can't get a lawyer. I've suffered systemic abuse that's been from the government and state levels and it's been profound and it's been elongated and it actually forced my suicide. Mental illness wasn't the reason I killed myself. It was the systemic oppression and vilification and the reduction of all my finances. I've just been called from the Ombudsman and they're saying I can't make a report. I've um, written to the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, and he got back to me with a letter um, on the 19th of September and it said thank you for your email to the Honourable Anthony Albanese. Um, about your complaint with ASIO, your correspondence has, been, correspondence has been referred to the Attorney General, Honourable Mark Dreyfus, as the matters you raise fall within his portfolio responsibilities. The Attorney General has requested the Attorney General's department respond on my behalf. And in that letter, they've asked me to um, concerned about the conduct of ASIO and to report that to IGIS, but they've already rejected my complaint. And then they said, you've also mentioned concerns about several Commonwealth government agencies. You may wish to refer the details of those concerns to the Commonwealth Ombudsman. But the Ombudsman, which is an independent statutory officer, whom Parliament has given a range of functions, including investigation of Commonwealth administrative action. And they said, if I wish to lodge a complaint about the agency's conduct, a form is available. Now, I've just spoken to them and they've refused to acknowledge me. And I've made a profound and truthful statement that's happened to me. That while I was with Steve Stefan Isonides, he drugged me and then in aggressive sex, raped me. He convinced me not to ever tell anyone about this. And he's um, now um, re refused a settlement. He's exploited me over five years. ASIO have been complicit in that because they knew I was on a pension while he was earning $40,000 a month. And his violence and his malice and his manipulation of the Australian political system has really been systemic and political and it's abused me. I'm currently homeless. I can't get a lawyer. I can't be a whistleblower. I can't go to police. And um, now with this allegation, um, that is within the remit for police to investigate. So I've already guessed when the police find out who I am, they're not going to acknowledge me one single bit. And so um, I've got a disability. I've got schizophrenia, ADHD, adjustment disorder, and um, a cognitive brain impairment. I've got my NDIS worker with me right now, and he's just about to call down in on police. And I'm going to tell him about the rape. Here we go. It's a brutal, systemic and political oppression that's happening to me. You have called Victoria Police. If this is an emergency, hang up and dial triple zero now. To speak to the I predict that they won't acknowledge me in any way, no matter how serious the crime. I'm a scapegoat and I don't have a voice and my continued advocacy is met with pointed neglect. I'm not afraid and I'm going to take this um, investigation and my victimization and oppression and my political persecution to the UN. The UN um, upholds several um, conventions which Australia is um, a member of and has ratified. That's the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Um, the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment Options. Dean, I'm pleased to hear you come to Gilmore Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. I'm a support worker with Dr. Richard McLean, and uh, he wanted to um, make a statement. So I give a call on my own number, and you can speak to him to the phone if you want. Hello, how are you going? Sorry, How are you going? It's oh, can I just get your um your police number please? Yeah, four four two zero five. What's the 
message in regards to? My name's Richard McLean, and Steve Isonides, my former partner, drugged and raped me. Yep. <clears throat> when did this happen? 2010. Why is it being reported now? Because he's threatened to kill me if I ever told anyone about it. But he's already threatened to kill me and a conspiracy is happening because the government won't acknowledge we're ever together and he's got all government agencies on side. I'm reporting that I was drugged and raped. Station, Richard, and provide the statement? Sorry? Are you in a position to come to the police station and provide the statement? I am, but I'm reluctant to come to the police because every time I'm engaged with them, they put a mental health act on me and they incarcerate me in a hospital as a political prisoner. I'd prefer to make the statement now on the phone. The statement needs to be signed though into, so it can be used as evidence. Can I just make the statement now and can I come in and sign it just quickly? No, it needs to be done in person. It can't be done over the phone, unfortunately. So. I can't report being drugged and raped to a police officer on the phone. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we need to discuss it so I can get all the details. It needs to be a statement provided. I'm making a statement now. But it needs to be a signed statement, Richard. And I said I'll come make the statement now and I'll come in and sign it. Well, we'll go through all the particulars when you come to the police station. I don't know if I'm talking to Richard. That's the biggest issue. I need identity to be established first. What would you like to know from me? It's just not how it works, unfortunately, Richard. If I come into the police station, are you going to incarcerate me with the Mental Health Act? Not if you don't threaten suicide or harm anyone else, I won't, know. So, I'm not. Can I guarantee that I'm going to be able to come in and make a statement without you putting me in hospital? If it's me you're speaking to, then we can go through all those. Unless I feel that you're going to cause yourself harm or someone else, then I can't act on that mental health act. Look, to be fair, mate, the police have come in and incarcerated me numerous times in my life, and they've also been pivotal in witnessing everything that I own being destroyed um, by Werribee Mental Health and my old landlord. Not once, but twice. I've lost all of my possessions twice because I've been threatened with the Mental Health Act, and the police have actually ran me out of town um, threatening me with that and I didn't want to go back to the hospital which was the scene of the crime where I attempted suicide. You do understand that, don't you? I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Richard. I really am. But the police have been pivotal in using the Mental Health Act in order to persecute me. Do you understand? The Me Mental Health Act recently changed, so that works in your favour. I'm not aware of that. Can you detail what that change is? So it's no longer Section 351 where you causing uh, a serious threat to yourself or someone else where we can enact on the Mental Health Act. So it's now Section 232, I believe it is, where it is care and control of the individual if those circumstances arise. What does that mean for me if I come into the police station today and report that I was drugged and raped? We can only get AV to assess you if that's the case and if they deem you fit then we go from there. What's AV? We can't detain you. So you you, can't, you say I can't get detained if I come in so I can make this report, is that correct? Sorry, say that again. So I can't be detained if I come in and make this report, is that correct? Yep, we can care and control for you. Does care and control, is that another way of saying keeping me uh, a prisoner of the police? <laughs> I don't really know, mate. That's not really... It's, the wording's changed, but essentially we do have the... Uh, the same um, same principles behind the Mental Health Act, but a lot of the wording's changed. But AV essentially has the first point of call and assessment behind the whole. What's thing. AV mean? Ambulance Victoria. Sorry, mate. I'm using police lingo. Right. Okay. So look, I'm pretty distressed. I'm okay actually, compared to what I've been through and what the police have actually put me through. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to report systemic corruption of many government agencies, and including the fact How's that... How's that going for you? What? How's that going for you? Not very well, mate. Why? It's a question. And 
Can I report systemic crime to you? Sorry, say that again. Can I report these crimes to you? What sort of crimes? It's a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Have we got evidence? Yep. Then you can report it. Oh, gee, I'd love to know what's written down on your police form there when I call up Victoria Police. Because every time I do, you just gaslight and reject me and ostracise me in every way possible. You don't acknowledge me. You won't even... Yeah, I'm asking you to come in so you can make the formal uh, report. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, and all you're asking is to put me in a vulnerable position where you can hospitalise me. I've been burnt before, mate. You understand that, don't you? Do you, do you require police to attend to you? No, because you don't know where I live and I like it that way. I've been oppressed by the police, mate. That's part of the problem. Well, mate, perhaps. I'm just throwing an idea out there. If you don't, if police stations cause you um, distress, have you tried 131444? I have, mate. You wouldn't believe. Yeah. I've tried everything. If you're going to try and assist me, can you just please acknowledge for me that the police know that I was together with my former partner, Steve Isonides, for five years? You were together with who? Your ex-partner for five years? Yeah, Steve Isonides, 11th, 12th, 71. What's your date of birth, Richard? 8th of April, 1973. 8th of what, sorry? April, 1973. That's my NDIS worker who's acknowledged my victimisation, my oppression. He's, um, he's said that my human rights have been abused, but the Australian Human Rights Commission won't investigate it. Right. He's here with me now. He's acknowledged this is happening to me. It's not just in my head, and I'm not delusional. That's fine. But I, I need you to understand, Richard, if you want to report this, you need to come in. Can I just ask you an off-the-cuff question before I actually come in and report it? Can you ask what, sorry? An off-the-cuff question before I come in and report it. Sure. Is it possible to be just banned from an Australian statutory agency like the Australian Financial Complaints Authority? I'm not even privy to what that even is, to be fair with you. You don't even know what it is. Well, am I asking the wrong person, mate? The Australian Financial Complaints Authority, where you get financial determinations ruled by an ombudsman. Ah, uh, right. I'm kind of with you now. Oh, I'm banned from there. What's wrong with that? I don't know. This is the first time I've spoken to you, Richard. My other issue is that my human rights abuses and victimisation have been acknowledged. However, the Australian Human Rights Commission won't investigate my case, like I've been Black band. Who do I report that to if the Australian Human Rights Commission won't report on my human rights abuses, you know? Uh, like that's clear corruption, isn't it? Hey. That's clear corruption of a public official, yeah? Uh, in terms of trying to assist you for your, what you're stating, Today to me, Richard, I'm happy to help you if you come into the station. We can sit down, we can discuss the incident, and I can get the relevant uh, unit to um, clarify your needs. Um, how's, how's that sound? I'm extremely suspicious you're going to try and detain me and put me in hospital. It's happened you, many times you, before. You've made absolutely no reason for me to do that so far on the telephone. Okay, well, if I print out that... Can I make a meeting with you um, tomorrow at, at a time suitable to you? What time do you want me to come in? And I'll meet you, and I want to meet a police um, gay and lesbian advocate, if I can, please. I'm unfortunately in a response van tomorrow, so I'll be not in the reception area tomorrow. Well, I'm going to come in tomorrow at a time that you tell me now, and I'd like to meet someone, uh, probably someone senior, and I'd also like to meet um, 
a gay and lesbian liaison officer, please? Uh, we can facilitate that, I'm sure. Um, That'd be great. Any time from 3 o'clock would be fine. So, okay, I'm going to come in at 3 o'clock tomorrow and I'm going to um, say these allegations and I'm going to come in with a whole lot of evidence and then we'll have to move forward from there. But this is framed by the Prime Minister sending me to the Attorney General and the Attorney General's Department sending me to IGIS and um, the Commonwealth Ombudsman and me just not being able to have any traction with either of those. Yeah, all right, we'll go from there tomorrow, yeah? Okay, cool. Thanks. Alright, thanks for your time. Can't report it.